The next big milestone for Zoo Strikers is the beta, letting you play our online 3D platformer shooter game, testing the movement, shooting, and items with your friends. In the previous devlogs, we showed off this list. Finish these, and we're all set for the beta. Except in reality, the list turned out to be more like this. So, where do we start? All right, here's how we begin. First task, the hub still needs a train and railway. Once this is done, we can call the hub beta ready. This was a fun test. I wanted to push normal maps further than I ever had. All of this detail here is all coming from the normal maps and textures. The train's mesh is basically a cube without them. So, how is this done? It all started with just this shape, which I then UV unwrapped and brought into a different scene. This is a special scene I've made in Blender that is using the normals mat cap. Here's the train's normals. They're just shapes overlapping each other. Same thing for the railway. All this detail is just from the textures and normal maps. I'll link in the description a proper tutorial on how you can set up a Blender scene like this. It saves a lot of time. With the extra time I had, I created these new flower vases. Now here's the high poly version, and then here's the low poly version without the normal maps and with the normal maps. I was so impressed with these, I had to keep doing more. Next up were beach balls. And then, this large fabric advertisement. I even went back and added some beveled edges to stairs and tables. These look great, but I am noticing an issue. If any of these items are in the shadows, they lose all the normal map detail. So I think it's time to try out vertex painting, which gives you the ability to paint whatever colors you want on the vertices. I am using Polybrush for this, which is free in the Unity Package Manager. Hopefully, this will work. Second task, tutorial level. Now this needs to act as a simple playground to let the players test everything out and let them know all the controls. Right, it's done. The tutorial map was actually the first map I made in the new style, just to see how the style would look before I actually went in and made the hub and the capture the flag map. First off, the tutorial will tell you everything you need to know about the movement. And then, you have all the guns here that you can test out and see what you like. After that, there's all the current items you can throw around and see what they do. Pretty simple tutorial level for now. Since that's done, how's the hub going? The vertex painting ended up helping tremendously. Check these out. Not only can I help define these faces in this completely shadowed area, but I can change their color so they look different than the ones over here. I also vertex painted the buildings so the color of the building isn't just a flat white. It's a gradient and gets more bluish as it goes down. I highly recommend trying out Polybrush, it's awesome. The hub is all done for now, but this isn't even the version that players will be playing in the beta. It's about to get more small updates, but I'll leave those for the next devlog. Also, here's a small update from Alex, the character designer. He's been doing all kinds of great characters, and in the next devlog, he's even doing something else. For now, here's three new NPCs for the hub. This is Paco and Tanya, a couple of detectives searching for a master thief. Tanya is the brains, while Paco is the brawn. And this is Clover, the master thief. He reminds me of Lupin the Third, which is awesome. As he always does, Alex has hit it out of the park with his character designs. Very nice. At the same time though, we're going to need item spawners in the game modes. This will be up to Derek, creating certain spawn points around the map that spawn random items and ammo refills. Fourth task, new moves. Expanding the player's moveset is important. For the closed beta, we're testing with a new hover jump. As previously explained, after hovering, the player can press the jump button again and get an extra jump. This move was pretty easy to implement but completely changes the game. Anywhere on this map, you can go. The vertical movement limit has been expanded greatly. Not to say we didn't encounter any issues, 
there's a glitch here where if you hover and then wall slide and then jump, you get a huge boost. This is because it's activating both the hover jump and the normal wall jump on top of each other, which makes this super high double wall jump. The thing is though, I kinda like it. This makes climbing walls much faster if used in certain ways. I'm not sure if we'll keep it in. It's fun and helpful, but doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Fifth task, UI. The HUD has to turn red when on the red team, and we need new elements for talking to NPCs. Sixth task, items. These are one of the big reasons that the beta and this devlog took so long. There are six items, and most of them are throwable or use physics in some sort of capacity. And it was very important to get the lag compensation right on these. Using Unity's in-engine physics is a real pain when you're trying to do online stuff like this. And even now, the physics items throw out like this, which looks kind of wimpy. It really should be like how most other games throw their items. We started simple, the boost line. All it has to do is make the player run really fast. It's basically the rocket flower from Mario Odyssey, so I started with this blast effect for behind the player. It's got a lot of different layers going on here. I think my favorite part of this is the cool block trails it leaves behind. After that, we made the spring cherry. All it has to do is increase the player's jump velocity for 15 seconds. So I created the spring model with a bouncing kind of of animation so when you jump it's like this digital spring is helping you out those were the easy ones now we're on to the physics items starting with the banana players throw it out and now it's a banana peel how this actually works is pretty easy it uses two different models one of a normal banana and then one of it peeled and it just switches between them once it touches the ground now, the Molotov Pepper is pretty similar. You just throw it out and then it spawns in these fire effects using a couple particle systems and the splat decal. Using the same throwing physics, we moved on to the pineapple grenades, which also have this very lovely explosion effect. If you want to learn how to make an explosion like this in the Universal Render Pipeline, then check the description for a tutorial. And of course, we had to add a rocket launcher. I spent a few days making this new shark robot model that shoots out the rocket and then does a flip. This flip is to actually help show when you can't shoot. This is the cooldown period. I'd also like to shout out Tommy Tig Tig. They sent me this awesome animation for a bull rocket launcher. Sadly, the shark was already done when I got this, but it could work well for a grenade launcher. And lastly, this is a very helpful item, the ammo frog. Walk up to him and he'll replenish your ammo if you're low. Originally, this was a dog, but I redid the design to match the guns. And I thought it'd be cool if when you walk over him, he'll reach his tongue out to you, like he's holding the ammo in his mouth. But the programmer, Derek, took this to a whole nother level. You only have to walk near him and he'll reach out to you, and the bullets fly into your gun in this cool animation. Now I love this ammo frog. I just waste all my ammo just so I can go back and see him do this cool animation. After finally finishing the items, it's time to tackle another big thing, implementing bullet magnetism. Basically, if there's a hitbox near the ray cast of the bullet, it'll magnetize towards that, making your bullets feel more accurate and easier to hit other players. We're still tweaking it, and we'll be testing it out a lot in the beta, seeing how accurate it is and any problems that may come from it. I'm gonna leave this devlog here. We've got a bit left to do, but I'll leave those for the next devlog. It took a lot longer than we thought, but that extra time hasn't been wasted. I'm so excited to finally let you start testing and playing Zoo Strikers. Hopefully you'll like it. Now that all that's out of the way, when is the closed beta? The closed beta will begin Friday, July 9th. To join the closed beta, click the link in the description. This will take you to the Steam page for Zoo Strikers. If you are interested in playing the game, then please wishlist it. This will help a lot, especially since it's a multiplayer game. 
Anyways, click on the community hub and you should see our Discord post with the link to join the Discord. Once you're in, look for the beta channel and just say you want to join the closed beta. From there, you'll just have to wait. We will message players their keys for the closed beta once it's ready. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you when I see you.